Start writing now. Like I said, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just writing these blogs to expose what was going on. So in a way, in a sense, I was totally unaffected by these stresses and strains that are on a writer who's thinking consciously, I'm writing this book for this audience, blah, 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 after I do this, you know, in this certain way. I was just doing it to expose what was going on. It was just coming naturally to me. So once this agent said, you know, we're going to have a book and all this stuff, I started thinking, all right, I'm a writer now. I can so what happened was, I went through all these really weird phases where my writing just went completely, looking back at it now, ridiculous. Um, I had like a surreal phase, and every book I read by like an author that I respected, I would see his style, and I'd think, oh yeah, that's a cool style. And I would incorporate that into my writing. So my writing was just going all over the place, completely unpublishable. But it was like... Um, in anything, if you're growing in anything, you're gonna you're gonna go through pains, and it was like I had to grow grow through these pains to try what would work and what wouldn't work, you know, before I, I could eventually find my voice, which is something I'm still doing. Um, someone told me if you read books, that will improve. That's the best way to improve your writing. And I've got this manic energy, so we ended up reading over a thousand books during the time of my incarceration, logged every single one and rated them. In 2006, which was my peak year, I read 268 books alone. Now to do that, I had to, for starters I had to dodge prison work, so I managed to wangle a waiver um, from prison work from the psychiatrist because I had a diagnosis of bipolar disorder at my sentencing. And to do that, First thing in the morning, I had to, as soon as I jumped out of bed, I had to start reading. But I had a problem, you know, I had to go to the toilet, brush my teeth and all that stuff. So I put an audio book on right away because I was allowed a walkman in the prison. So boom, right away I've got the audio book on. Go on the toilet, brush my teeth, do all that stuff. Run to the chow hall, wolf my breakfast down. Then it's the physical books. So I've got a big pile of them. If there was one I really loved, I'd perhaps read it really quickly, like War and Peace, or Contemporary Fiction, A Man in Fall by Tom Wolfe is probably my favourite, and just stuff like that, The Goose Flesh is Rising, you're just reading it all the way through. But generally I would have like a pile about 10 to 20, and I'd read half an hour or an hour of one, and rotate onto, onto the next. By the night time, my eyes would be pink, and my brain is like shutting down from all this reading. It's so stressed and strained. But it's like I went through this fantastic journey through literature. From all the classics, going back to uh, like Greek philosophy, classics of psychology, read all the different psychologists, the original texts. Just to then coming into more, um, like I said earlier, Don Quixote, and uh, the Russians, Tolstoy, got to be all one of my all-time favourites, um, Dostoevsky, the, the short stories of Chekhov, what can be more magical than those, you just read them and they just, it's like food for the soul, they just put a smile on your face, these little stories about these Russian peasants doing all this, these little crazy conversations and stuff, and it's just, it was brilliant, um, 